Reginald here. So, you're tired of all the good weapons, and you're sifting around in the dumpster bin from what you remember, and you pull out the chain axe. Think to yourself, this could be fun. Maybe. And then, instead of your gameplay looking like something like this... Instead, your gameplay looks a little bit more like this. Ah, oh, I'm getting it. And you start to wonder, what am I doing wrong? And how can I make this thing work? Well, good news. I happen to be uh, particularly fond of the chain axe, and I've been playing with it quite a lot, so I'm here to give you some quick tips, tricks, and uh, simple instructions on how to make it work for you. Uh, I will be discussing how to make this work for the veteran, and how to make this work for uh, the zealot. Uh, there's a few idiosyncrasies in both cases, and we'll try to keep it short. I'm not going to go in-depth on build guides or anything like that. I'm just going to give you the minimum viables and, uh, and then some instructions on how to actually make the thing work in a gameplay sense, how to make it fun to use, and what you might be struggling with. So uh, let's hop right into that. Okay, so for your veteran, uh, you're going to really need two things to make the chain axe work for you. You're going to need a plus three stamina curio, or you can do two plus two. Uh, that's what I'm doing thanks to RNG. Uh, it works just fine. Uh, you're also going to need Head Taker 3 at a minimum. Uh, the reason for this is uh, Head Taker will get you over the hurdle for breakpoints on one-shotting things sooner than uh, than trying to build stacks of slaughter when you can't one-shot stuff. And additionally, the Stamina Curios are there to help you get take advantage of the strong push attacks on the Chain Axe and give you a little wiggle room on when you need to use those. Due to your poor Stamina generation, it's going to be hard to constantly spam push attacks, so you need to be careful about how you're dodging, be careful about how you're push attacking, but with a plus three stamina curio, at least you have some extra space. Now you can, instead of running, say, Slaughterer 3 as your second blessing, you can run Rev It Up or Bloodthirst. Uh, both of those are fun uh, and have some, some value, so I'm not telling you you can't run anything else, but personally I find that Slaughterer 3 and Head Taker 3 gets you a really strong chain axe that can hit a lot of breakpoints and hit a lot of stuff for a lot of damage, especially when you kind of get going. It sort of winds up as hordes and enemies go, and you start doing a lot of damage, and it can feel really good. Alright. So for your Zealot, a uh, little different different vibe here. You've got Rising Conviction to help you get over the line on some of the breakpoints, so you could elect to favor Slaughterer 3 instead uh, of Head Taker. Now, I do run Head Taker and Slaughterer on both my chain axes on all sides, but on my Zealot, there's a little bit more room to try and play it with things like uh, Rev It Up or Bloodthirst, since you don't have to hit uh, those breakpoints is hard with, with Head Taker, and it's easier to get the plus power benefit of, of Slaughterer. You can really kind of play around a little bit more. So, Additionally, Zealot has great stamina regeneration, uh, and he can use a lot of push attacks default, so you're a little bit more flexible on Curios. Personally, I still recommend a plus 3 at a minimum. I run plus 8. Um, I don't have any other kind of Curio aside from uh, stamina Curios, and the only reason I don't have 3 plus 3 stamina Curios is because I can't get a good roll. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I do strongly recommend playing with stamina. It's actually really fun. You can swing for, for hours. Um, but that, uh, that's how I run my Zealot. Now you've got yourself a decent chain axe, so you're taking it out to the field for a spin, and you're noticing some inconsistencies. Sometimes things don't die when you expect them to, and other times things take way less damage than you feel like they should have. And for whatever reason, that guy you just hit took three or four hits instead of one or two to die. That feels pretty bad, so what's going on? Uh, I'm going to explain that here, and the overview is going to look something like this. Uh, we're going to talk through what the role of the chain axe is in your kit, uh, what each swing is used for, that's light heavies, push attacks, and special attacks. Uh, we're going to talk about what idiosyncrasies you need to watch out for, that's of course the key detail you're going to be interested in on those weird issues you're experiencing. Uh, we're going to talk through how to fight uh, with it using dodges, 
blocks and push attacks, and we're going to go over a few tips and tricks that I've found useful against certain enemy types or certain situations. So that's the overview. We're going to now look at uh, what role the chain axe has in your kit, and fortunately that is very easy. It is a generalist weapon. Uh, it can cleave through hordes pretty effectively. Uh, it's useful against elites, specials, shooters, uh, bruiser groups. Uh, it's effective against armor. Uh, and it has good stagger on a number of different of its attacks in different ways. Uh, so the heavy attacks, uh, I won't get this a little bit deeper, but you know the heavy attacks are good stagger against uh, groups of enemies, whereas the light attacks and special attack can stagger uh, heavier enemies pretty effectively. So uh, it's it's quite a handy weapon. And just as a point of order, uh, as a zealot, I've actually gotten favorable uh, comparisons to heavy sword zealots uh, in my games. We kind of line up pretty well on the damage and uh and kills domain but i tend to be able to fight those heavier enemies more effectively because i'm using the chain axe so that's a pretty cool call out uh, next up we'll be touching on lights what are light attacks useful for well uh good news is uh, they're fairly flexible and you can use them on a lot of different targets but the bad news is they have a lot of idiosyncrasies that make them feel kind of weird and bad at various times unless you know what you're doing. Um, I want to touch on really three main topics. What you can kill with them, uh, how the damage actually works with them, and the latching mechanic. I'm um, actually going to probably do the middle one first. So let me just show you what the damage looks like on these things. Alright, it does two ticks of damage, and it can definitely headshot. It's pretty quick too, and you've got three decent swing patterns. Uh, mostly the strike down, but there's a horizontal in there. That's not bad. So, good swing pattern. Okay, the two ticks of damage thing might be confusing at first. It is controlled. Uh, the first tick of damage is actually your normal damage stat and then your penetration stat. The second tick of damage is modified or something. I, I don't know the exact math, but I'm just going to give you the what the stats card says, which is that the shredder stat actually has an influence on that second tick of damage. So keep that in mind, you actually need a good roll on all three of those stats if you want to have a good chain axe. Obviously you're going to be using your special attack, so Shredder is going to be important for that too, but it also affects your light attacks. Um, the next thing I want to show you is sort of the weird hit mass uh, calculation that goes on with uh, with these things. And it can, can lead to some bizarre results where you're hitting enemies for a lot of damage and then suddenly you start hitting enemies for very little damage. Uh, and that really is a bummer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kill a bunch of these get my buff stacks up. All right. Let's hit that guy. See how I hit this guy and he didn't take two ticks? Well, that feels terrible, so suddenly that guy's fine, but wait, that guy isn't. What's going on? Alright, I'm not hitting these guys the way I should hit these guys. That guy dies in one hit now because I've got all these buff stacks. Alright, so I've got... Some, t some enemies are taking a two full ticks of damage that's equaling enough to one shot a bruiser and some guys are who have less health aren't dying when i hit them hit mass um that's frustrating at first uh but once you understand what's going on it's actually kind of handy because depending on how you hit your opponents and the density of the horde you're fighting you'll actually start cleaving and you'll deliver your damage to the second target rather than the first uh that's nice uh, you can, I, I don't know if you can get to three. I've been trying to work that out. Uh, but there's definitely some sort of element of AoE to your attacks as well when you're for your first hit. So uh, it, it does seem quite handy against groaner groups or, or crowded groups of bruisers uh, when you're in a, in a in messy horde. So uh, the trick that you need to be aware of is if you are fighting single groups, like sort of more spread out groups of bruisers or shooters, and you're finding that issues coming up where you're like hitting multiple dudes sequentially, but you're not killing any of them and you're doing like less damage because of this hit mass problem, because you've got all your stacks built up, switch to your heavy attacks. That'll get that problem removed for you. You'll start doing the damage you need to do real kills on them. Those heavy attacks can get close to one-shotting or even one-shot depending on your stacks. So that's what I would do. I want to demonstrate this hit mass thing for you, so I'm going to spawn a group of sacrifice walkers. You can see I'm hitting two. I'm starting to hit more. Can't tell if that's three or not, but we're going to find out. There you go. So you can see how I'm starting to get through multiple. And it does look like I'm getting to even three. So that's pretty effective. You can see how quickly I'm cutting through these guys, dealing pretty good damage once those stacks build up. You can see how it kind of acts like a, a bad version of Brutal Momentum. 
Whereas uh, when I'm against these guys, well, the problem is I might hit this guy who's spaced enough from this guy that I don't hit them both. And well, this guy doesn't die and now I've wasted his swing. So that's where you want to keep that in mind. As your stacks go up, their effectiveness in lighter horde, tightly packed horde enemies goes up. But their effective against more loosely spread out bruiser enemies goes down. So you want to switch to heavies in that case. This is one of those things that is pretty interesting. Uh, if I build a couple of my slaughterer stacks, my head taker stacks, and then go to light attack the head, look at those numbers. That is not bad. Um, depending on your crits and your other stacks, you can actually get some pretty decent light attack damage. That's more important when swinging against a mauler. It's just harder to get that headshot clean uh, than it is against a crusher. Uh, obviously, the health pool is smaller on the mauler. Uh, but it is handy to note that you can weave those light attacks in against even carapace armored enemies and still get some valuable damage out of them. Uh, now, mostly I'm going to recommend using your special attacks in this case, but if you need to weave something in, you're hoping you're pretty close to the end of that thing's life, you might be able to like, tip it over the edge more quickly this way. That's not a bad plan. Okay, wow, next thing I want to talk about is elites. Hitting elites with the light attacks is a valuable thing. So for elites, when you hit them, they take a pretty decent chunk of damage. I don't have uh, any busting to this for armored or flak. So they take decent damage. Obviously, with more buff stacks, you get more damage. Uh, and they stagger out of whatever animation they're doing typically. So um, that's not true for swinging maulers, swinging crushers, or uh, swinging bulwarks, or ragers in their attack chain. So don't try that with your light attack, but it'll work on gunners who are shooting. It'll work on flamers that are f actively firing. It'll knock a sniper away. It'll uh, prevent a dog from jumping on somebody or you. Uh, you can use the light attack to stagger a bomber to drop his bomb. Uh, it doesn't do much to muties in that front. So that's a handy way to use your light attacks to get some stagger value. Ragers, actually, this is something I want to point out. Ragers will actually stagger as long as they're not in their attack chain. Watch. That's not bad, right? You can keep that guy pinned down until you're done with him. Handy. Okay. There's a call out here that I need to make. Um, two of them, actually. The trapper is an exception to this rule. It does not care. If you are hitting it with light attacks, it will trap you. Don't use light attacks. Use a push attack, shove it over, hit it with a heavy attack, uh, go with a special attack, whatever you gotta do, but be cautious because they will absolutely ruin your day if you're, if you're trying to melee them without getting them knocked over in some way. Doggos take a ton of damage from the light attacks. I don't know why uh, they look like this because if you go hit an infested pox walker, it's not even enough to kill it, so they just seem to really hit dogs for a lot. Handy. What are heavy attacks useful for? Well, they're not all that useful against flak and elites. That is not impressive. But what about groups of infantry? Alright, that's horrible. You can see as I start to get these stacks up, start to hit pretty good. Wow, alright. This ain't bad at all. That's what heavy attacks are useful for. And then let's talk push attack real quick. Uh, when you're using your veteran, you're going to want to be careful about how you employ this. You'll want to try to use heavy swings instead. It's difficult, uh, but you can work it out. Uh, with the uh, push attacks, they're very strong. Uh, they don't do tremendous damage, but they hit a lot of targets. And they have a great shove, so you can use them a lot. And then they have good follow-up uh, attacks in the chain. So we're going to demonstrate that real quick. That's a light attack. You'll notice when you do it, they're both from the same side horizontal. That's great for slapping heads. Not bad. Uh, additionally, we can do a push attack into a heavy. It comes out very quick. That's nice. The last thing I want to talk about is just rev attacks. Uh, they're quite strong on the chain axe, and uh, obviously, like most revved weapons uh, and special weapons, they do more damage on heavy swings than light swings. Uh, there are use cases for using the light swings, like I just need to hit this thing and stun it now. Please be advised that uh, if you, as you saw earlier when I died as a veteran, if you <laughs> swing it, uh, it does take a second uh, to actually start stunning a target out of a swing pattern, so your first tick of damage isn't good enough. You need to time that well. But I'm just going to show you how much damage this thing does, and I don't have the best one either, so this is just carapace. Not bad. You can actually kill that in two heavies and a light. I bet if I had plus carapace instead of plus mutants, 
uh, or Maniacs, I could probably do better against Maniacs. Uh, on Body Shot, it is that, and I can hit it twice. I can shoot it with a Slug for my Agrippina if I want, uh, or Agrippina, I don't know. Let's talk idiosyncrasies, and to try and keep this short, we're going to throw in some tips and tricks while we're at it. Uh, so let's hop right in. The light, one thing to know, and the thing that's probably going to catch you the worst about the light attacks on the chain axe, is the way that latched attacks actually grab your camera and pull it towards the target that you've hit. Uh, this is extra bad if you hit an arm. Uh, they've redesigned these recently so they don't hit the arms as much, and so it's less of a problem. But when you do hit an arm, the, your camera will kind of flail around. Just that's going to happen from time to time. Uh, if you hit a head or a body, it won't wiggle too much, so it's not a big deal. But one of the things you want to avoid is the traditional, you know, like swinging of your screen kind of thing that I like to do with heavy attacks and plenty of light attacks on other weapons, but I do not recommend here. Uh, in this case, what you should instead do of hitting it and trying to wrench your screen, which I, you can't see with my mouse, but I'm trying. Uh, I'm getting stuck on this guy, and I'm just staying on him, even though I'm trying to whip my camera around. Uh, that can be, be really jarring, so rather than trying to whip your mouse around the way you might, uh, just aim at him directly, as if you're trying to shoot him with your gun. That works a lot better. A couple tips and tricks on light attacks. So, for light attacks, when you're fighting a bunch of bruisers, a good technique is to hit one bruiser, then hit the next bruiser, and then hit the third bruiser, and then cycle back to the first. Uh, this will keep them all stunned so they can't ever hit you, uh, while allowing you to quickly dispatch them and build your stacks at the same time. So that's a handy little technique I figured out. Uh, another useful thing to note uh, about the light attacks is you can actually use them to stagger a pox burster uh, out of its leap. Uh, it will send it flying about the same distance as a shove, and so if you need to save stamina, you can do that, assuming you know nobody else has shot it or is attempting to damage it, because uh, otherwise you might blow it up on your face. That's always bad. Uh, on heavy attacks, uh, this is hard for me to show you, uh, but I want to pull this out for you, like show you that they, they actually are faster than you think. You don't have to hold them as long as it appears. The animation makes it seem like it's really low initially, and if you let go too soon, you're not going to actually swing. But you can let go a little sooner than you believe you can, and that will get you heavy attacks faster. Um, a tip also uh, for using your heavy attacks is, especially as a veteran, but also when you're a zealot, is you can kind of stand closer to a horde of enemies than you might be used to. Uh, when uh, when otherwise you might be dodge dancing or something like that. Uh, you can kind of use them because of their high stagger value to really swing into a crowd almost with impunity and then only use those dodges or push blocks and push attacks when you're certain you've made some sort of error. Uh, so I would, you know, that's a good way to keep your stamina up and I'm going to actually cut in some footage here uh, of a different mission than the one I'm running right now so that you can see that. So a couple of points on special attacks. Um, when you land a special attack on an, on an opponent, uh, you can actually continue to strafe. And this is a important detail to keep in mind. It's, it's sort of something you need to know if you're not familiar with these things. Uh, you can use that to keep the enemy you are sawing between you and the other enemies that are trying to hit you up to a point. And it is a good way, especially when fighting something big like a crusher or a bulwark, uh, to keep yourself safe while using a saw in a crowd. And you've probably seen that in some of my footage. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate that real quick. There you go. See? Handy. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is using your special attack on Bulwarks. I find it hard not to hit their arm with the radius of the swing, so that tends to reduce the damage you do against Bulwarks. That's a bit of a bummer. Um, there are some options you can use for that. I will show you one of them. So, you know, obviously this is a bit of a timing thing always, but I found that push attacks tend to hit their back. Whereas light attacks and these cross attacks tend to hit their shoulder, regardless of how I swing, and that hits carapace. So, uh, that's just a trick for you. 
All right, well, thanks so much for visiting for a little bit. Hopefully I've given you some tips and tricks that will let you get fun gameplay out of this strange but very enjoyable weapon once you start using it. Last thing I'll just say is uh, stick around for a minute. I'll show you, uh, like, one minute of fun gameplay, and have a great one. Come back and visit. Bye.